man, well, speaking, let's go. Somebody was firing on all cylinders. Cardio was there. Uh, movement was sharp. Footwork. Uh, your hands, your wrestling. I mean, 30, 27 all across the board. What, what more can I say than what you said out there for 15 minutes, man? Hey, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I felt like uh, the biggest surprise for me was that he was um, he was timing some of my power shots. And I mean, I'm not going to lie for my entire career. People have been telling me to take a little steam off my shots, but I'm a little bit hard headed. So when I get out there, I do want to take people's heads off. And um, I expected as a longer fighter, I did expect I, I expected him to be moving back and trying to catch me reaching and going over the top. But um, to my surprise, he was rolling under my shots. You know, he's like 5'10", so I didn't expect him to be dipping under. So, um, so yeah, I felt like I needed to sharpen that up. But mostly, I just wanted to put a statement um, on my cardio. I wanted, for some reason, for my career, people have always kind of wondered, how's this cardio? How's this cardio? I came in here in two and a half weeks' notice against a guy who uses pressure and breaks people and um, uses his cardio to break people. And I just wanted to show that I can hang with that even on two and a half weeks' notice. If I can do that, then uh, give me six weeks, give me eight weeks, and I can hang with any of them. So. And you know what? That You kind of beat me to the punch there. The fact that you came in and we're able to put on that type of performance. Obviously, you stay in the gym. You don't have to get ready if you stay ready. So that has to make you feel good, right? That's like almost like a, like a tribute to your dedication to your craft that you can give us that type of show on what two days' notice, if need be. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, I, it was probably about a year and a half ago that I think I made a switch in my life that I decided that I was just going to be a complete professional. This is what I do. I'm not going to be able to do this for that long. One day this is going to be gone. And I, I was just going to just be on top of all my stuff outside of like in the gym and outside of the gym at all times, you know, so I want to be prepared to where if a call comes on two weeks notice, three weeks notice that I can jump in and I can take that fight and I can and I can get the job done because, yeah, you just you just never know how long we're going to be able to do this. So. Um, so, yeah, I want to hopefully next time or I mean, it doesn't matter what people think, but hopefully people will stop asking about my cardio because my cardio, I'm, I'm going to have my Rob type cardio soon. That's in the bar. That's championship level cardio. So keep that mindset. That's what's up. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. You're welcome. You you mentioned earlier the the way he fought and you know was a tall taller guy fighting small. He was even throwing flying knees at you. Yeah. What was the talks like in between rounds and adjustments you had to make too? Um, you know, I have I have great coaches. Um, I had Steven and my brother in the corner, and they were just. Uh, just, just tell me to stick to stick to what we're supposed to be doing. You know, stay, stay disciplined longer. Uh, stop throwing so much power. Just time your shots. Like you, use your timing and stuff. You know, I don't remember exactly everything that they were saying, but I know that in the moment I was listening and I was trying to apply it um, to the best of my ability. You know, but I, I truly trust my coaches. My brother, obviously, he's been with me through my for my entire life. But as long as I've been fighting, he's always just been right there by my side, right there by my side. So when he's there, I feel incredibly comfortable. And then I'm also building a good relationship with these other guys. My coach right now is actually fighting. Um, my main corner coach is fighting right now, Trey Ogden. And so I was a little bit, it was a little bit nerve wracking when we were gonna fight the same night because I felt like me and him really clicked in the corner and we were starting to build some real rapport. Um, but my uh, one of my teammates, Stephen Graham, stepped up to the plate. He's a super professional. He's a super, he just, he's super consistent. He's just always there. And I was able to really put some trust into him as well. So, um, you know, just, just trusting the people around you, you know, it's, it's such a blessing. You know, I know that everybody in my, in my corner and in my circle has, my, has the best intentions for me. And so I can just rely on them in moments. That, and so I don't have to think as much. Man, that's awesome. But thank you for sharing that. And you know what that, I, I know the career still in its, uh, in, in its youth, if you will, because you're, you know, you still got plenty miles on those tires, plenty to go. But it's great when we hear that from fighters, that they have a good team around them, because that's a reflection of you. All these guys and girls are mirrors, and they, they just are going to reflect back your hard work and your effort. And, and with that being said, tell me a little bit about the things that you had to cut out, because it seems like you really had, like, you know, like, got into the trenches here to be like a full-time fighter, as you said, in and out of the cage. So what's the things that we have to remove to really focus? You know, um, as far as the coaches go, I've truly been blessed with like the best coaches my entire life. And, you know, there's ups and downs to that. You know, and even, even my time at Ford is like, such a huge blessing and I learned so so much and I just saw save backstage and he's giving me like the best advice good job kid I'm like how was the fight he's like dude you did good you did this what I saw this so it's like 
I'm just so blessed with the people that I've had around my life. And that goes way back to high school wrestling coaches, to youth wrestling coaches, to my dad was my first coach in, in football and stuff. Like I've just, I've always had excellent coaches and I just thank God for that. But as far as what I had to cut out of my life, just distractions, man. There's so, there's so many distractions out there. You know, whether, it, I mean, and without getting into too many details, just, just distractions. You know, I just really had to decide, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm supporting a family off this, four boys. Like that is no, like there's no room to be up and down. You know, like there's like these kids are looking at me and they're relying, they don't even realize it, but they're relying on you to provide for them. You know, so like all that BS, all the distractions, it had to go and I just had to be full time in this thing. And um, I felt like that's what I did. And um, yeah. Well, it shows. I mean, I'm sure when you sit back with the team, have a, you know, not not a viewing party, but or maybe at the gym, when you look back with it, and then also with this, with your sons, they'll be like, man, dad, wh when was this part of the career? Well, this is when daddy had to really go to business, you know, get that briefcase and go to work for y'all, and this is how it showed, 30, yeah. 27, 30, 27, 30, 27, on two weeks notice. So and distractions come out, and not to interrupt you, but they come out in the cage. You guys have seen me against John Castaneda, you know, I love, I love Castaneda, I love everybody that I fought, you know, but was Castaneda the better fighter than me in the first round? No, I do not believe so. But when you have all these distractions, you're doing all this other stuff outside of the cage, you get hit with one shot and all of a sudden your legs are gone and in front of the entire world, you're crumbling. All those, like most people can have these things that they're doing in life that they know they shouldn't be doing that nobody finds out because they're not put on a stage like that. I was put on a stage to be not embarrassed, but to be exposed in front of the whole world, you know, and it, and it really does show in that cage and I decided that I'm never gonna do that again if, if anything if I lose a fight it's gonna be because that fighter was a better fighter than me and I gave every freaking thing I had in that in that octagon but I'm never gonna get exposed like that again I'm never gonna be BS in and freaking and let that happen to me again you know because that was not a fight that I lost off skill that was a fight that I beat myself Miles beat himself that night and I'm, I'm not doing that no more I can dig it man respect to that so we got this miles we got 2.0 we got Focus, no distraction, Miles. What's next? How soon do we get you back in here? Are there any names? Of course, you know we're going to ask that. And what's 2024 looking like? I know it's already the third quarter, but what do you want to do with 2024? Yeah, I would, I would love to get back in here soon, you know. Um, I, I think I've said his name before. I got a lot of respect for the guy. He's a family guy. He's a great fighter. But um, Eamon Z uh, uh, Zahibi or Zahabi, he's uh, on a four fight win streak in the UFC. You know, I was really impressed by his uh, last fight against Basharat. Um, I think that'd be a great fight. We've been both kind of coming up together, you know, four fight win streak, that's big. I'm on a three fight win streak, even though they say two, it's really three. Um, I think that'd be a great fight. Or Ricky Simone, he's number 15, you know, I think, I think, uh, I think I'm about ready to get my number. So either one of those guys, you know, or, or anybody else, Sean Shelby does a great job. So um, we'll see, but I, I, for me, my job is just to, Go back to the tape, see what happens, see what I can prove on, and get right back to work. Man, I like both of those. Just I'll co-sign on that. That's either going to be a barn burner, or if you could get a number next to your name, that would be right on track. Congrats yes, sir. on the win, and well done, sir. Thank you. And both of those call outs, that's just out of respect because you appreciate their fight styles, or is there anything, any sort of personal beef between any of those? No, guys? no personal beef. You know, anybody, anybody at this level, like, I respect, you know, even even, Co even Cody Gibson. Like, I, like, this is a dude that was in the UFC eight years ago, wasn't sure if he wanted to do this. Also, as a family, he's a teacher. Retired for a little bit, I think. Came back, freaking went to the Ultimate Fighter. All that, like he's been through so many freaking ups and downs, dude. Like, like I even I, I have so much respect for him. But those two dudes are just, they just seem like the right the right guys right now. Amos Zahibi's on a four fight win streak, like I said. I would like probably to get one more fight before I do a ranked fight. But it, but if that's not, I, I also feel like I am ready to get a number by my name. And Ricky Simone is just number 15. You know, it's nothing against him. I've been watching him. He was the LFA champ before I was the LFA champ. And I was just watching him training like, man, I'm trying to get like this guy. Look at that belt. Oh, wow, he went to UFC. Look what he's doing. You know, I'm like, I've been watching these guys and trying to be like them. So um, it's, it's no disrespect or anything like that. It's just, it's just the way it is. You know, it's just a game. And you mentioned being on the fight card with a, your coach training partner, Ogden. Is that a blessing in disguise or is that tough? Is that extra pressure or is that something that... It's a blessing in disguise. He's a really good coach and he really, he takes care of his fighters. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to throw them out there. So um, first when I was like, hey, they offered me a fight same night as you, he kind of had a look on his face like, uh, no, like I need to be in your corner, bro. Like I've like this is our, this will be our second fight together. Like in, you know, but 
as he wrapped his head like as we talk more about it and stuff he knows that I got to support my family he knows that I can't pass up opportunities like this and we and we made it work you know and um and being the coach that he is and setting the example that he is, he has soldiers right behind him that are ready to step in and fill his place when, when they need to, you know, and that, that just, that's just a testament to, to being a good coach. Every good coach has those type of guys, you know, that are in there and that they're ready to, that they're ready to step up when they need to. So, so we made it work. And now, now I think it is a blessing in disguise. Next time, I would like to make history by maybe me fighting early and him fighting late or vice versa and him and having the first person actually fight and coach the same night. But we weren't able to do it this time. But that would be pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And you mentioned, I mean, so that being said, you know, you, you get the short notice fight. I mean, you turn right around to him. Is there any real sort of game plan or is it just a matter of focusing on cardio? What was the initial discussion that you guys had? Yeah, we definitely made a game plan. We had a game plan set in about eight hours, um, you know, and we, and we ran through that game plan. Um, so, yeah, there was that we studied the film and we, we got right to work. What was the game plan for him? The game plan was I wanted to stay on my bike. I wanted to I wanted to keep moving my feet. Cody comes forward a lot. He uses a long jab. You know I wanted to, I wanted to try to slip outside that jab and time my right hand. I wanted to use a calf kick and then I wanted to set up my takedowns. You know I, I wanted to like halfway through the round I wanted to start wrestling to try to secure rounds. Um, yeah, I did. I, and and I just I just didn't want to get into sitting there and just exchanging in a war like. Cody really draws out of people. I wanted to keep moving and keep trying to land my shots. Um, the game plan didn't, um, maybe I didn't execute the game plan as well as I should have, but, um, but that's, uh, that's why I go back to the film and I, and I study and I try to get better. And last, just trying to put the two, was it after the Castaneda fight was when you really, you said that you, you wanted to switch it up, make sure cardio was never an issue. Was that the fight? You said about a year and a half. I look back, that's the, I think the loss around that time. Was that the fight? The Castaneda that? fight was the one that I realized that like, if you have any little bit of weakness or any little bit of like BS going on in your life that you think you can bury and that you can hide, it will come out. Like in this octagon, it'll come out. All that stuff comes out. And that was the time that I realized like I'm never gonna let that happen to me again. If I go out there, I slip on a banana pill, somebody lands some clean shot on me and I get knocked out, okay. I'll pick myself up and dust myself off, but I'm not gonna beat myself. I'm not gonna let my own issues make me go out there and get exposed in front of the world, so. I was gonna say, that's, uh, we always hear from fighters that physicality is one thing, but it's the mental side that's probably the bigger portion. Would you say that that's true, that the, the mental side of the game is maybe even tougher than the physical side? 100%. Yeah. Congrats on the victory. Thank you. Trey just won, yeah. let's go. What are your thoughts about that right there? Um, I was, it looked like, uh, I know that he wanted to make a statement. I know that Hall of Ball is a very good, um, like a two-strike two black belt or something like that. Um, and I know that he wanted to prove that his jiu-jitsu and that his grappling is superior. And I, I think from what I saw, he did that. Yeah, great. Awesome. Let's go. <laughs> Congrats on the victory. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.